This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. If you've used TikTok or other popular social media sites, you've probably already come across some AI-generated songs. Accounts have used AI, or artificial intelligence, to create fake audio of musicians like Taylor Swift or Harry Styles singing any song. The weird part? It sounds exactly like the original artists. Some users have taken it a step further, producing collaborations between artists who've never performed together before. Go back 10 or 20 years, and this kind of technology seemed impossible. So how does it work? There's an algorithm called the Rave algorithm, which is one of the main ones that they're using to do all of this AI voice cloning, which has kind of taken the internet by storm over the past few months, starting in about February of this year. And it's essentially a timbre transfer algorithm. So it allows you to map some of the timbral components, the quality of one's voice onto somebody else's voice. That's Tina Tallon, an assistant professor of artificial intelligence, music composition, and the arts at the University of Florida. She says these algorithms are able to produce AI-generated music by analyzing massive data sets of voices, songs, and lyrics. While that may sound very complicated, the platform itself is surprisingly simple to operate. Since the AI frenzy began, dozens of music generators powered by these algorithms have surfaced online. Nowadays, even the least tech-savvy person can create their own song. However, while these recordings have led to some fun experiments and viral videos, Talon warns of the consequences it has on the music industry. In terms of the copyright perspective, which is one of the ways that artists have traditionally been able to protect their work and make money from their work, at this point, anybody can make a song based upon stylistic aspects of your art, and in this case, even your voice. And unfortunately, there are no copyright protections for that because copyright only protects actual published pieces of work with a significant element of human authorship. And so if somebody goes and analyzes all of your music, all of your lyrics, all of your, in the case of the writer strike, right? All of your scripts and then generates new things based on them. They're not violating your copyright as of right now. There are lots of court cases, of course, that are pending and we'll see what the outcomes of those are. So I think it's making a lot of people really question how we remunerate artists for their work. Despite AI songs sounding nearly identical, these artists, who are replicated, don't receive any royalties or compensation. This poses a huge threat to recording studios. Before AI, companies relied on exclusive contracts that gave them the sole right to produce an artist's music. But now, anyone on the internet can do the same thing. As a result, record companies are fighting back. After an AI song was posted on YouTube using Canadian rapper Drake's voice, his record label ended up filing a lawsuit. Universal Music Group was very, very adamant about getting this new song taken down, right? Saying that this was copyright infringement and other sorts of things. And so the person should not be able to, who created this should not be able to monetize it. And so I think in a lot of ways, we're seeing record labels react because they have exclusive agreements with these artists. And so if other people can create work that sounds like these artists, it actually dilutes their market share. Although record labels are pushing back against AI, some in the industry are actually choosing to embrace it. Voice replication is the most well-known feature in AI music, but there are also several other uses for the technology. For instance, it can help workshop lyrics, improve audio quality, or experiment with different sounds and melodies. Robert Laidlow, a composer and fellow at the University of Oxford, says he views AI as a collaborator instead of a competitor. I've used it 
as almost like an instrument in some cases. So you sort of, it's creating new kinds of sounds on the fly. So you're sort of using this intelligent algorithm to mimic other instruments on stage and to take these sounds and to spin them around and turn them into something new. I've kind of used it in a, almost like a co-composer way when I'm writing the music at home on manuscript paper and I sort of write a little bit of music and then show it to an AI that I've trained and it sort of tries to continue it. Laidlow adds that while AI can threaten the jobs of singers, songwriters, and producers, people will always appreciate and opt for human-made music. For instance, while machines have the ability to learn a lot of things, they have yet to replicate the magic of a live performance. My field, which is classical music, you know, I write music for orchestras and for live performance. I don't see there being much danger of that, not because I don't think an AI will be able to write that kind of music. I think it will eventually be able to do that, but because I think people go to those kinds of concerts for a reason, and they, they want to feel a human connection with an artist. And it's the same reason why people go and see pop concerts as well and jazz concerts, all sorts, you know, it's the same not just a classical music thing. And yes, AI has its critics, but there are many artists like Laidlow that have chosen to adopt it. Recently, the Beatles made headlines after announcing they would release new music with AI-generated versions of John Lennon and George Harrison's voices. Well, this brings a way for great talents like Lennon and Harrison to continue their legacy after they've passed. Some fans wonder if this is what the men would have wanted. On the other hand, the singer Grimes actually invited fans to make AI songs with her voice, as long as she received half the royalties. But this split also begs the question, who's enforcing that she actually receives her half? Both cases of the Beatles and Grimes bring up a big thing missing from the AI debate, consent and enforcement. Despite conflicting viewpoints on the use of AI, there is one thing Talon and Laidlow agree on. Artists should have the choice on whether or not they want their voice used. But in terms of these data sets that are amassed, it's not a violation of copyright for your work to be included in these data sets. And at this point, there's not really any structure for an artist to opt out. And so this is another part of this debate is whether we should have the default as opt-in which basically means by default, nobody's work is included. And you have to say, yes, I want my work to be included. You have to consent versus the current model. Well, there is no model because you can't really opt out at this point. But the default opt out models essentially say, by default, we can include all of your work and you have to say that you don't want us to. While there are several opinions, one thing is for sure. This technology is here to stay and it's going to shake up the music business. In the coming months and years, the most pressing items to figure out are regulations around copyright, compensation, and artist consent. Laidlow points out that these are conversations happening across the planet right now as AI shakes up several other industries. Do you embrace or do you reject the internet? It doesn't really make sense as a question because it is so baked into how we live. And I think that that is what is going to happen with AI. You know, the way that we interact with machines, machine learning with AI, is going to be everywhere in our lives. It's going to be in our cars. It's going to be, it is in our computers. It's going to be in our watches. It will probably be in our heads at some point. It's certainly in the music that we listen to, even if that's just Spotify recommending, using algorithm to recommend things. You know, AI is everywhere. To find out more about Tina Talon, Robert Laidlow, and all our featured guests, visit viewpointsradio.org. This segment was written and produced by associate producer Grace Galanti. Our executive producer is Amira Zaveri. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Coming up next week... Many people just sort of shrugged and said, well, it's God's will. If I live, I live. If I die, I die. Looking back to when cancer research was considered a losing battle. Then... You could buy bottles of tincture of cannabis from the big drug companies like Eli Lilly. A brief history of cannabis and its entry into the U.S. market. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And that's Viewpoints for this week. 
Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows. And find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. It takes years to build a business that sustains a family and is worth passing on. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work closely with clients to provide the financing, cash management, and deposit products necessary to grow a business. So your life's work will continue to prosper once it's in someone else's hands. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your business. Visit sandyspringbank.com business. Credit products offered by Sandy Spring Bank.